we want to discuss three different ways hormones can cause anxiety. So we're going to discuss uh, too much, too little, and the impact of birth control on anxiety and how the different hormones, uh, female hormones and male hormones, uh, affect the mood and how they can be better balanced to uh, to create more mood stability. Uh, so specifically in this video, we're referring more so to the female hormones and how they change throughout one cycle and throughout a woman's life and how we can rebalance those. So generally estrogen and testosterone are stimulating, progesterone is calming. So we're going to discuss uh, how they change a uh, scenario, uh, like I said, of too little, too much, and uh, the impact of birth control. We're all about helping you gain a deeper understanding of your health and what's going on with your body. Hopefully this video gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing this content, uh, I get a statistic wrong or the name of something wrong, and almost always there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog, you can find it there. Uh, those oftentimes go into a little bit more detail than the um, than the videos do as well. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And um, it does take you know considerable effort to produce this content. So if you're liking the information, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have questions about any of the content, please ask it in the comment section uh, here or on the blog. Uh, that's why I'm producing the information for you to gain that deeper understanding. So ask the questions if you have them. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. Three ways hormones can cause anxiety. So this uh, topic is kind of centered around the question of whether or not hormones can cause anxiety. And a lot of times they can. And so the first thing that comes to mind with this uh, from a physiological standpoint is how hormones can affect your brain and your nervous system in general and, and as by default, your mood. So specifically, we're referring to female and male uh, sex hormones like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, uh, and uh, pregnenolone and DHEA. All these can be attributed to female and male uh, uh, differentiation in their sex characteristics. So, um, so generally speaking, these uh, hormones act like mood stabilizers, so they can you know sort of balance out some of the highs and lows that one might experience from time to time. <clears throat> that said, they're not equal in their ability to do that. So sometimes some of them are more stimulating, some of them are more uh, calming. And this is where, uh, you know, hormone imbalance comes in. Too much or too little of certain ones can have a negative impact on your mood, leading to more instability and, and potentially anxiety. Um, so what we're not referring to here uh, is things like cortisol and uh thyroid and other hormones. So specifically the sex hormones. Um, so we want to look at three different scenarios, uh, uh, three broad scenarios where this imbalance might take place and uh, how it might manifest. So first let's look at too much. Uh, too much of, of anything isn't a good thing by definition too much sort of uh, tells you that. But um, specifically for females, uh, there's something known as estrogen dominance. So too much estrogen uh, and by default too little estrogen, too little progesterone can uh, cause this sort of imbalanced mood. Uh, more so what you'll see is like PMS type symptoms leading up to a woman's cycle. Now sometimes it can happen uh, earlier on in the cycle too, like during ovulation, you can get little spikes of this as well. Um, but when the estrogen levels are much higher than the progesterone, it can definitely lead to more anxiety, irritability, frustration, things like this. Um, and a lot of times what women will, you know, say is like they feel like they're a different person uh, for, you know, couple days or sometimes it's even like two weeks and they're going through these cycles of ups and downs and it can be uh, very unsettling especially if you're not tracking it and you don't know what it is so usually day one uh, through 14 uh, that's when they're going to be fine if they have this and then day 14 to the end of the cycle is when they're going to feel these kind of emotional swings and 
the closer you get to having the menses, that's when, you know, the symptoms may be peaking or, or be even worse, or for some women, that's the only time they'll occur. Um, <clears throat> now, it's not the only uh, time that things can go wrong with uh, hormonally with a female cycle, but with, when we're talking about too much of a certain hormone, uh, this would be related to estrogen uh, being too much at that uh, time of the cycle. It's pretty pretty rare that uh, there's too much progesterone, but if you're supplementing with uh, too much progesterone, usually it's not going to cause anxiety, so we won't really uh, get into that too much, but um, sometimes uh, women are supplementing with estrogen and, and or just testosterone, and these two uh, can also, uh, testosterone can also lead to anxiety because it uh, turns into estrogen, and so you can you know, artificially create this uh, estrogen dominance picture by taking uh, testosterone supplements as well. So you need to make sure you're checking your levels uh, at specific times throughout the cycle so you know uh, if you are indeed getting too much. Um, to, you know, now it's not uncommon for uh, for women to need testosterone uh, to support their overall hormone balance, but uh, too much of it can you know lead to uh, higher anxiety. So now let's discuss uh, too little. Uh, so too little, uh, you know, kind of in the last one we talked about too little progesterone. Well, certainly, uh, you know, they're kind of go they're like the yin and yang. So too little estrogen, too little uh, progesterone, or too much estrogen is kind of the same thing. Um, there's a certain amount of estrogen you should have. There's a certain amount of progesterone that you should have. Uh, you can either have really low progesterone and normal estrogen, that would be an imbalance, or you can have uh, really, uh, really high estrogen and normal progesterone, and that would be a problem as well. Um, where you might want you might want to, in that case help. Uh, eliminate some of the estrogen. So, <clears throat> so too little of uh, progesterone can definitely lead to anxiety. Um, just like too much estrogen can lead to anxiety because they balance one another out. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but in some cases too, as women get older, uh, they can have too little uh, estrogen uh, in general, and along with too little progesterone, and that can also lead to anxiety, can lead to fatigue, can lead to kind of foggy thinking and uh, difficulty with um, you know motivation and things like that. So too little estrogen uh, in any scenario, whether you're young or old, can be problematic. Although it's typically not common uh, in younger women, unless perhaps you know it's something that occurred uh, after pregnancy. You know the hormones are not uh, being produced, or for some other reason, uh, you're not producing uh, much hormones. Too little uh, estrogen, too little testosterone in a female can can cause problems. So the last scenario I wanted to talk about is with females taking birth control. So we talked about uh, the idea of, you know, focusing on the uh, sex hormones and birth control, it kind of mimics uh, some of the sex hormones. Uh, they're not actual bioidentical hormones that a woman would make, but they're synthetic versions of estrogen and progesterone. And um, there's research on this too, but they do uh, tend to increase uh, your cortisol levels, and that can cause uh, more anxiety too. Um, so I mentioned I wasn't going to talk about cortisol here, but um, as it relates to taking birth control and the birth control being uh, elevated, uh, you know, very strong uh, hormones. Um, you know that can lead to high cortisol. I've seen it many times. It's it's uh, also well documented. Um, go off the birth control, and your cortisol levels will uh, go down typically, and as would your stress level, uh, anxiety level. Um, but uh, not every woman will have high cortisol if they're on birth control, and not every woman will have uh, you know anxiety if they're on. Uh, or high cortisol and, and anxiety if they're on birth control, but it is uh, pretty common, uh, at, least, at least what I see. Um, so that sort of leads into another topic of just taking really high amounts of hormones in general. Uh, if you're getting pellets or doing some sort of hormone replacement therapy, it can sometimes lead to high cortisol. So you've got to be mindful of the relationship of all the hormones. Um, 
but generally speaking, you know, hormones can play, you know, have a mood stabilizing effect, uh, the, the sex hormones and too little of them, uh, can just having really low levels of all your hormones can lead to, uh, kind of, a you know, more emotional ups and downs, uh, having imbalances can lead to ups and downs. So really talking about is making sure you have sufficient hormones, making sure they're well balanced and making sure there's not too much overall of these hormones. So now that you have the three ways that hormones can cause anxiety, you should be able to uh, be in better shape with trying to figure out how to rebalance your hormone levels. Um, you may need to get some blood testing done. You may need to uh, talk to your doctor about testing at various points throughout your uh, cycle, and that's a good idea to do. Uh, hopefully this was useful information. If it was, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.